Good morning, Year 4. You have made it to the final lesson of our unit of work. I hope you had a really good time exploring the rainforest and doing lots of different texts. Today, we're going to do a little bit of non-fiction to finish off because I thought some of you might like to do some research on some of the rainforest animals. So let's have a look and see what we are going to be doing today. So the book that we're going to be reading is called, we're just going to read a small section of it because we've only got one lesson, it's called The Wonder Garden and it's a non-fiction book but it's a beautiful picture book, it's got lots of gold leaf on the front of it and inside it's got some beautiful, beautiful pictures. So it's a little bit different to a typical non-fiction book and the way it's written is quite unusual as well because it's written as if you have actually visited all these different habitats and you're actually there right now looking around you so we'll have a look at the language it uses a bit later on so let's have a look and see what we're doing today let's see what we need so today we're going to be using the structure and grammar of the non-fiction book as our starting point so we're going to be taking a tiny section of that book and we're going to be looking at how the author has used language and we're going to then try and replicate that we're going to try and recreate that for a different animal and hopefully we've been working on those expanded noun phrases haven't we they're going to come in again so it just shows how useful those noun phrases are because we've used them in lots of different types of writing now so that's our plan for today let's check you've got everything you need i'm sure you've got what you need now because you've got used to it so your pen or pencil for writing a different color for editing and your english book or some nice paper and we will get started so we're going to read a little bit of the book first okay i'm going to read you some sections i'm going to show you the big page layouts and then we're going to really focus in on one particular section of the book so here is the first page that is about the rainforest. And you can see, so there are lots of different habitats in this book and there are sections on lots of different habitats and the Amazon rainforest happens to be one of them, which is why I've chosen this book. And this is a double page spread and the book is really big. So I, but it's really difficult to get on screen. So I put that, that's the double page spread I put on screen for you. And then we're gonna focus in on different sections so you can read it a bit easier. easier. But you can see here you've got lots and lots of rainforest creatures down here in the corner there's a guide and it names all of those creatures and they've all been beautifully drawn and painted um, by the artist and the illustrator here so let's have a look at it a bit closer so we're right on this first section here so we've got the heading the main heading the amazon rainforest and then we've got our opening section here and that opening section says unequaled in size complexity and diversity this rainforest is the world's zoological jewel. So that makes it sound very appealing, the rainforest, doesn't it? And it's a zoological jewel because of the number of animals. And we've talked about that before, haven't we? About just how many animals and plants are in the rainforest. Then it says, dating back 55 million years, its scale is mind boggling. It is more than 5 million square kilometers in size and produces 20% of the world's oxygen. So that's giving you a kind of general overview about why the Amazon rainforest is so important. So that's like an introductory section. And this whole page gives you a kind of general view of the um, rainforest. So then we move on and you can see here, we've got a nice big capital letter A that goes on, for, on that first word there. And it's, they've thought very carefully about the layout of the page, which is why it looks so beautiful. So this is the part where it starts to feel like you're actually in the rainforest. So the author has written it as if they're almost like a tour guide taking you around the rainforest. So ahead of you is a dense, vast forest, nice noun phrase in there, shrouded in mist. The air starts to thicken, the temperature rises and the humidity makes you feel clammy and sticky. With every footstep, the foliage multiplies until it begins to dwarf you. So you can imagine, can't you, if you walk through the rainforest with those huge great kapok trees and things, you're going to feel quite small. The horizon becomes obscured by plants and the sunlight that reaches the forest floor is dappled. You look up and see that you are shadowed by a great canopy of trees that tower overhead. Soon you stand alone, swatting and swiping at insects and listening to the howls and hoots of animals hidden in the undergrowth. You have arrived in the Amazon, the largest tropical rainforest and one of the richest concentrations of life on Earth. So they've really built it up, haven't they? They've really made it feel exciting. You really want to be in that rainforest. Then it gives us a little bit more detail. And you can see from the main page that this section is actually kind of a little bit smaller. So it starts with some really 
large text and the font size kind of gets smaller and smaller as it goes down the page. I've enlarged this for you so it's a bit easier to read. Home to more than 5 million species of plant, insect and animal and over 1,500 of the world's bird species, the vast size of this habitat is hard to imagine. Carving through the rainforest heart flows its spectacular life source, the Amazon River, more than 6,400 kilometres long. It contains more than 2,000 species of freshwater fish in its waterways and tributaries. Animals in this environment can cover vast territories or rely on just one tree for their survival, but each, like its habitat, is extraordinary. Often, the animals are also extreme. And I'm just going to talk about the animals a bit more. The largest snake in the world, the green anaconda, one of the fiercest fish in the world, the piranha, and the lethally poisoned dart frog all live here. And they may be just the tip of the iceberg, as there are millions thought to be left undiscovered. So that gives you a general overview, doesn't it, of that rainforest and gives you a sense of what you might find. Then we go on to the second page. And in the second page, it's slightly different because it's now really focusing down on separate animals. And you can see there another beautiful illustration on that second page. And then this is divided into sections. And it's got an introduction at the beginning. It's got our, our title at the top here, our introduction at the beginning. And then we've got subheadings here because we've got separate sections on separate animals. And it's one of these sections that we're going to try and write today. So this section is called Life Abundant. So it's got so many creatures. So we're gonna have a look at this opening section now. Because of its warm, humid climate, another noun phrase there, lots of noun phrases through this. Because of its warm, humid climate, amphibians and reptiles are abundant in the rainforest. Abundant means there's lots of them. The kind that you could encounter will depend on the time of day that you choose to explore the forest pools and plant life. So we're now going to read the animal sections and you'll see when we get to the animal section, even they sound like we're actually in the rainforest. It feels like we're really there waiting to get and have a look at these animals. And it, the book is almost sounding like the tour guide taking us round the rainforest, which is why it's written in quite a different way to normal nonfiction books. So there's a really clear voice from the author. So when you're writing, you need to try and create that voice. You, want, you need to try and imagine that you're actually talking to people who are in the rainforest right now. So it's gonna be in the present tense. All your verbs are gonna be as if it's happening right now and not in the past, which often it can be in a nonfiction book. And this is the kind of text that we're going to be looking at. So we're going to be looking at, you can see here, that we've, I've circled the green anaconda section and the black caiman section. And we're going to have a closer look at those now. They're two examples of two different animals. I'm then going to show you how we could create one of those. And then you are going to have the opportunity to do one yourself. And you can either do one that I've chosen for you, or you can pick your totally your own rainforest animal. And you can go and research it and do that. But they're really short little extracts. It's not a big, long text we're going to write today because we've only got this lesson. But let's have a closer look. So here's the green anaconda. So we're going to try and pick out the key features so that we can see how to write one of these ourselves. So at the beginning, We've got green anaconda. So that's the title is the animal's name. So that's nice and easy. So we know what our title is going to be. Then underneath that, we have got the animal's scientific name, Eunectus murinus. Now, scientific names are often quite tricky. They're often based on Latin words. Um, so we're going to need to make sure if you pick your animal that you find out its scientific name. So you might need to do a search on the internet or have a look in some books that you've got at home about animals and see if you can find their scientific name. And that's going to be their, your subtitle. Then let's have a look at the main part. Slowly winding through the branches is the long, strong anaconda. Got a nice noun phrase in there straight away. Nice expanded noun phrase with that comma between the adjectives. So slowly winding through the branches is the long, strong anaconda. This snake never stops growing and becomes the largest in the world, killing its prey by wrapping it and crushing it to death. So you can imagine if you're touring the rainforest, you're not going to be able to give each person loads and loads and loads of information about every animal because your tour will take too long. So this, this piece of writing that you're going to do today is going to be quite short. So you're going to have to be really picky about what beats of the animal you decide to talk about. And it's probably going to be the most exciting things that you want to talk about or the most interesting things. And what you need to bear in mind is that the author's written it as if you're looking at the creature and she's drawn a beautiful picture 
of the creature next to it. So you don't have to spend too much time describing what it looks like. You might want to think a little bit more about other information rather than its appearance because this is a picture book, so there is going to be a detailed picture of the animal in the piece of, um, next to the piece of writing. So this main section is really quite short. We have an opening sentence and in that opening sentence the animal's moving, slowly winding through the branches, so that's what the snake's doing whilst they're looking at it. And then we have some key features which include a noun phrase, so a brief introduction of maybe what the animal looks like, but nothing too much, okay? We've got an expanded noun phrase in there. The second section, the rest of the text, is all in the present tense again, it's all as if you're looking at it right now, and they've just picked out some key information like I just said. So you, we don't want too much information about the, each animal because we want each section to be quite short. And you may find you've got time to write about more than one animal. So we'll have a look at another one. We're going to have a look at the caiman now and see if, how similar this one is to the one that we've just looked at. So again, we have got the title is the animal's name, the black caiman. We've got there, what did I say that second bit was? Can you remember? Yeah, good. The subtitle is the scientific name for the animal. So this one is Melansuchus niger. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that perfectly, but that looks like how it might be pronounced. And then we have got some information about the caiman. And you can see, again, it starts with the animal moving. So we've got beware, the black caiman stealthily sliding through the water. So you can imagine that's what it's doing as the people are looking at it. This creature is so powerful that fully grown, protected by its scaly armor and strong jaws, it becomes an apex predator, unhunted by any other species. So it's right at the top of the food chain. Nobody else is touching it. It's gonna be having, it spends a lot of time hunting, but nothing hunts it because it's too dangerous. So they are the key features again. And again, you can see, we just picked out some really key features to put in there. So it's gonna be brief, this writing, but the important thing is that you choose the right words. So you choose some really effective adjectives. You choose some really careful verbs to describe how it's moving. And you keep your information as if you are standing right in the rainforest right now. So that's what we're going to try and do. Let's just clarify exactly what your task is. And then I'm going to start showing you bit by bit how you're going to put that together. So you're going to write an entry for another animal that would fit into the rainforest section of the Wonder Garden. And you can either research your own animal or you can pick the one that I've left you some information of at the end of the video. OK, so I've done, left you some information about the howler monkey. If you want to do the howler monkey, that's fine. There's some information there you can choose from. If you don't, you can go off and research whichever rainforest animal you'd like to, either using the Internet or maybe you've got some books on the rainforest at home. So what are we going to need to do? We're going to make, need to make sure we've got that title and the subtitle, so the name of the animal and the scientific name. Then we're going to have to pick out some key information. Our opening sentence is going to describe the character moving and it's probably going to have an expanded noun phrase in there. And then we're going to have one or two additional sentences, but it's not going to be really, really long. Okay, this is a brief piece of writing, so I want you to really think today about your choice of words rather than worrying about having to write loads and loads and loads. And it's really important when we're writing non-fiction that we use some of those scientific words. Okay, so, so we're really exact about describing the features of this creature. So here is a piece of writing I found on the internet about the sloth. It was on the um, National Geographic Kids website. Um, when you're looking for your animals, if you put, type in a children's guide to and the animal that you want to be researching you'll often get some much simpler texts that are easier to read than if you just type in the name of the animal and that's what I did I did a children's guide to a sloth and this was the information that I came up with so what we get you're going to have to do is read that information that you've got and decide which of the features of that piece of writing you want to use in your writing okay because that's way too much for the style of this wonder garden book so let's have a read of this. It says, these drowsy tree dwellings sleep up to 20 hours a day. And even when they're awake, they barely move at all. In fact, they're so incredibly sluggish, algae actually grows on their fur. So I think the important, so we need about, we need to have some information about the movement for our opening sentence. So I'm going to keep hold of that barely move at all. Um, I think actually you could see their fur, so I'm not going to spend too much time worrying about that. Let's look at the next paragraph. Sloths live in the tropical forests of Central and South America, and their scientific name is Folivora, or 
need that for my subtitle, don't I? So I'm definitely going to have that piece of information. With their long arms and shaggy fur, they resemble monkeys, but they are actually related to armadillos and anteaters. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that about sloths, that they're related to armadillos and anteaters. I would have thought they were related to monkeys, but apparently they're not. So I think that's quite an interesting piece of information. So I'm going to put that in. And the long arms and shaggy fur, I'm going to keep in there just in case I need that. So I've got those two bits of information. They can be 0 0.6, 0 0.8 metres long, and depending on species, weigh from 3.6 to 7.7 .7 kilograms. Actually, I'm not going to choose that bit because these people are actually going to be looking at this creature because they're going to be in the rainforest, aren't they? So I think they're going to be able to see quite a lot of information about the size of these animals. So I'm not going to put that in. I'm going to try and see if I can find something a bit more interesting. There are two main species of sloth identified by whether they have two or three claws on their front feet. Okay, I think that's important so, because that's something that if you're in the rainforest, you can look out for when you've seen these creatures, isn't it? Whether they've got two or three claws at the front. You can see our splash over there's a three um, toed sloth. He's got three fingers there or three claws. The two species are quite similar in appearance with roundish heads, sad looking eyes, tiny ears, and stubby tails. Again, I think that the people who are, are look, um, the tour guides are probably not going to need to use that information because the people who are looking at the creature are going to be able to see that. So I'm not going to choose that bit. Two toed sloths are slightly bigger and tend to spend more time hanging upside down than their three toed cousins who will often sit upright in the fork of a tree branch. Three toed sloths have facial colouring that makes them look like they're always smiling. They also have two extra neck vertebrae that allow them to turn their heads almost all the way round. Ah, I think that's the extra bit of information that I'm going to choose because they won't necessarily see that. They won't know why that animal can turn their heads around. So I'm going to choose that bit as my final piece. So you can see I haven't picked loads and loads of it. I haven't picked all of it. I've just picked out some key parts to that. Okay, so that's what I'd like you to do when you see your text in a moment. Okay, it's just pick out and go, right, which bits am I going to choose? And what you're going to need to do is decide on those and then you're going to make a note of them. So if I stop sharing my screen for a moment and show you what I've got up here. So up here, I've got a plan of those pieces of information that I wrote in. So let me show you. And I drew it's really short, our plan. It's just going to be a list of the features that we want to include in our piece of writing. So at the top, I have turn the screen slightly, you can see. There we go. So I've got the name slot and the scientific name. You're definitely going to need that in your plan so you know exactly what you're writing, okay? And then I've taken those things that I highlighted and I've just written them as short as I can. So I've got barely moves, because it moves really slowly, long arms, shaggy fur, related to armadillos and anteaters, and then I've got the idea of the two or three claws and two extra neck vertebrae, okay? So that's what you're going to do. You're going to decide which animal you want to do and you're actually going to go and research that now and write your plan. So let me sit back down and I'll just explain to you. So you've got a choice now, which animal are you going to do? You're going to read some information on that animal. If you've got um, it on the screen, you might be able to take your notes down as you're writing, if, we, if it's in a book. And you're just going to write a little list. You can say, I've only really got one, two, three, four, five, six bits of information. So it's not going to take you ages and ages and ages, okay? So you're either going to pause now and go and do that research or if you'd like to do the howler monkey i'm going to share my screen with you so you can see the information on the howler monkey and you're going to make your plan your list of information from that okay so let me share that screen with you now if you don't want to do the howler monkey you can carry on now just press pause and get on if you do want to do the howler monkey this is the information on the howler monkey so here we go. So you can see the piece of information is quite long again, okay, and you're going to have to pick out just five or six things that you want to include because you're only going to be writing two or three sentences, okay, so you're going to need to read through, pick out the bits that you want to include and put those in a list. So press pause now and go and do that for me. Okay, welcome back. So I hope now you have got a plan in your book that looks a little bit like mine with some key features of the animal that you've chosen or of the howler monkey if you've chosen the howler monkey. We're now going to think about how we're going to use that 
to make our piece of writing sound like a piece of writing from the Wonder Garden. So you will remember we looked at some key features and the first thing we looked at was the fact that we had a title and a subtitle. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do in my piece of writing is I'm going to put in a title and a subtitle. Okay, so let's try that now. So we're going to have the title sloth at the top of our piece of writing. And then you'll remember that the sloth was called a fully vora. Okay, so that's your two headings. Okay, so you need to decide, um, make, go back to your information and look for that scientific name and put your title and your subtitle. Once you've done that, the first line is going to be all about how the animal moves. So you need to have a look at your information that you've written in your notes. How does your animal move? And we've got to try and describe it as if it's happening right now. So I know my sloth, what the key bit of information I had from him was that he barely moved at all. Let's have a look. Look here, barely moves. So I'm gonna take that piece of information and I'm gonna start my sentence describing. So barely moving at all. If we spot this creature in the rainforest while I'm taking the people around, it's going to be barely moving. At all. That's how I'm going to start my piece of writing. Barely moving at all, comma. Now I'm going to be speaking directly to the people who are in the rainforest. So I'm going to use the word you. So you will need to look. Or are they going to need to look carefully into the trees, I think? My creature lives up in the trees, not on the ground. So you've got to think about where is your creature moving? So barely moving at all, you will need to look carefully in the trees to see, and I'm going to describe my sloth. To see, I, will, I think I'm going to think about his long arms and his furry body. So in the trees to see, here comes my expanded noun phrase, the furry comma, long-armed sloth. Okay, so I've finished one sentence and I've already got three things that I need for my piece of writing. I've got my title, I've got my subtitle, I've got the animal moving, in fact I've got four things, and I've got my expanded noun phrase in there. So I've done really well already and I haven't actually had to write too much. I'm then going to go on and add some other information about my animals. So if I go back to my plan, and that's exactly what you're going to do, go back to your plan, and you're going to think, right, what else have I done? So I've done that, I've done my belly boot, I've done my long arms, I've done my shaggy fur. So I've got three pieces of information left to write about now. I'm going to write about the fact he's related to an armadillo. I'm going to write about his claws, and I'm going to write about his neck, and I'm going to think really carefully about how I do that. So I'm going to write, it's a mammal as well. And it's important to use scientific words. So I'm going to say this mammal. I'll put my scientific word in there. This mammal. What can I say about this mammal? So I want to say this mammal comes in to main species. And species is another good scientific word to use. I'll put in there. So this mammal comes in two main species. And can you remember what they were? Remember what I said? We had the two and three, didn't we? Two or three claws. Do I need claws? I don't know claws, I think. This mammal comes in two main species, two or three clawed. And then I want to write about its neck. So how am I going to write about that? I think I'm going to set, I'm going to think about the head turning first. So I'm going to say the sloth can easily turn its head, can easily look around, maybe, can easily look around. 
Thanks. Two. It's extra two vertebrae. I've got another scientific word in there. Vertebrae. That means the bones in its neck. So I've got the two vertebrae. So this sloth can easily look around thanks to its extra two. Oh, I need neck in there. Put that in. Neck vertebrae. The sloth can easily look around thanks to its extra two neck vertebrae. So you let me move the screen down a minute. You've lost the bottom of my screen, haven't you? So you may catch one watching you. So even if they weren't looking at you to start off with, I might put an exclamation mark on the end there. Even if they weren't watching you to start off with, they've managed to turn the neck all the way around and they might well be watching you even if they weren't when you first started looking at them. So you can see, as I was writing, I kept going back, rereading my sentence, making sure I had those scientific words in there. Okay, I've got here, I've got another noun phrase, two main species. Okay, and here another one, extra two neck vertebrae. So I've managed to get some of my expanded noun phrases in there. Okay, so I want you to go off and do that now, and then we're gonna come back briefly and check your writing to make sure you've included everything. So, title of the animal. Subtitle, scientific name for the animal. Opening sentence, describing its movement and an expanded noun phrase to describe something else about the creature. And then a couple of extra bits of information, making sure you're sticking to facts because it's a non-fiction book and that you're using the scientific words when you can, okay? So see if you can do a fantastic job of that so we can finish off this unit really well. Good luck, go and have fun exploring your animal and deciding which bits you're going to choose. Okay, how did you get on? Have you got a brilliant piece of writing? I hope so. Let's have a look and see what we were supposed to be doing. So we were supposed to be making sure that we had the animal's name as the title and the scientific version as the subtitle. I got that. Have a look at yours now. Make sure you've got that. If you have, you can give yourself a little star at the bottom of the page. I'm trying to show you here. Put yourself a little star and you can say title and subtitle. In my school, we use lots of stars when children have done things really well. So you can write title and subtitle. Then the next thing that we wanted to use was an opening sentence to describe movement. So I've got barely moving at all. Have a look at your work. If you've got it, give it another star and write opening movement. If you haven't, can you go back now with your other colour pen and put that in? Okay, can you add it in? So you might have to rewrite your first sentence and make sure you've got that opening information in there. Then we need to be making sure we're writing in the present tense and we're including key information. So check your information. Have you got two or three pieces of really good information? Have you stuck to the facts? Have you gone back through? Have you got your noun phrases in it? If you have, again, you can put a star and write expanded noun phrases at the bottom of your piece of writing. And it would be lovely if you could go through and actually show your teacher that you know what they are by underlining them as well in the, in the same colour. And then just check all of your craft tests and full stops and all those basic things and make sure they're there and then your teacher will be very happy when they see your piece of writing. So we've come to an end. That's our last session. I am so pleased that you've managed to work really hard in the last two weeks. We have come to an end but some of you might be really inspired to write about um, rainforest. So if you have, you, there are some ideas here of things that you might want to do. So you might want to carry on and write some more entries for the Wonder Garden. So you might decide, actually, I'm going to make my own little Wonder Garden book. So you could write about each animal in the same way that we've done today, draw a beautiful picture of it next to it. And I'm sure your teachers would love to see those. You could have your own Wonder Garden rainforest book for when you get back to school. And I'm sure they would be very proud of you if you managed to do that. If you were really keen on the Explorers book that we read at the beginning of the, um, towards the beginning of the unit, then you might want to write your own adventure story set in a rainforest and imagine what happens when that, um, when the people that end up in the rainforest. Or if you love the poetry that we did, Angela McAllister's poem, The Rainforest, you might decide you want to do another one of those. So I set you a challenge to see if you could do the Galapagos Islands, but you might choose to visit the North Pole or you might choose to visit a desert and write about 
that in a poem. So there are all different things that you can do now if you want to, if you've been really inspired by the rainforest. I'm hoping that some of you might go and try and buy some of the books that we've bought already or get them from your library or borrow them from school because the explorers we didn't get to read very much of it and you might want to read some more of that and certainly the Wonder Garden has got some beautiful illustrations if you can get hold of a copy of that and have a look so I hope you've been inspired I'm so pleased to have joined you for the last two weeks and good luck when you head back to school you might be heading back to school on Monday or you might find that now your teachers have got some work for you to do instead I have really enjoyed being with you. So goodbye for now. Splash has really enjoyed being with you too. He says farewell too. I hope you've had a lovely time and I will see you again soon, hopefully. Goodbye and well done.